Okay, let's continue. The next topic is the reticular formation. We talk about the reticular formation because they are located right here also in the brain stem. Remember we said this is the brain stem, this is uh, pons, I mean uh, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. And you can see all these red arrows, they are indicating the uh, reticular formation. The reticular formation is a, a network of neurons that are, they are scattered all over the uh, brain stem. And they relay the information to, as you can see here, this area right here, this is the diencephalon, this is the thalamus. So they relay the information to the thalamus and the thalamus then relays the information to the rest of the brain. So then, as you can see here, this is the reticular formation right here. And again, it relays information they receive, for example, from the ears and from the eyes and also from lower areas of our body, such as, you know, our arms. So it has a lot of functions with respect to that. So you can see here again, reticular formation. Okay. And the function that it has is related to some motor coordination. Right here in the brainstem, we said we have the cardiovascular centers, right, with the vagus nerve. Remember, cranial nerve number 10? It goes down to your heart. So then it also has some function related to the uh, cardiovascular control. It has uh, motor coordination, as I said. It also has to do with consciousness. Damage to the uh, reticular formation may turn the person into coma, may result in coma, and obviously that is because of the importance of this particular area with respect to consciousness, as you can see in there, somebody control, as I said, cardiovascular control, other functions are pain modulation, and right there you can see sleep and consciousness, you can go into coma if you don't, if you have damage to this area. The next one is the cerebellum, the cerebellum you can see right here, so you can see where more or less where it is located, all this is your brain, we said this is the encephalum, this is brainstem, and it's behind the brainstem, below the brain. Okay, so a cut to the cerebellum, it can show you that it has these areas, right? And these areas right here, they are uh, called the arbor vitae. The arbor vitae is all these structures that looks like a little branches of a tree. Okay, that's what you have inside. The outside of the uh, cerebellum, it shows you that it has lobes. This part is the anterior lobe. This part is the uh, posterior lobe. Okay, also has hemispheres, left hemisphere and right hemisphere, and they're connected, the hemisphere, by the vermis. Okay, so very important structure because it helps us control, for example, equilibrium as well as coordination of movement. Okay, very important to remember functions, equilibrium, and coordination of movement. It has some very important cells, such as the Purkinje cells. Okay, they are very big cells that you are going to have in your cerebellum, as well as granule cells. This is one of the most abundant type of neurons that we have in our body. So if we keep scrolling down. There's multiple other functions associated with the uh, cerebellum, but again, the most important ones are equilibrium, as well as coordination of movement. Okay, and that's about it for this part. Okay, let's continue. The next topic is the forebrain. As I said, these are just embryological terms that I'm not going to ask you about it in the exam, so let's continue. What we have is the diencephalon. The diencephalon has three parts, as you can see here, thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. The thalamus is just a group of neurons, a group of uh, neurons that are, as you can see here, they're going to form multiple groups. They are located right in the middle before the information reaches the brain. A lot of times in the book you're going to see that this is referred as the gateway to the brain because all the information you know that you have coming from the body, from the ears, from the eyes, from the cerebellum, uh, from the reticular formation, they're going to go through the uh, thalamus. The thal thalamus processes all the information and relays this information to the different areas of the brain. So it has multiple, multiple different functions, but then the main characteristic is that this group of neurons, they're going to form groups, as you can see right here. So as long as you know that you have the thalamus has nucleus, that would be enough for you to understand what the uh, job of the uh, thalamus is going to be. Again, it relates all the information that goes from the body into the brain. Okay, the next one is going to be the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus also forms groups or nucleus, as you can see in here. But two of the most important functions that you need to remember about the hypothalamus is that it controls everything that got to do with hormones and everything that got to do with the autonomic nervous system. 
okay? Every single hormone that you have in your body is gonna be controlled by the hypothalamus. Hormones that you have, for example, in the testicles, in the thyroid, all those things are controlled by the hypothalamus and that's a very important function as well as the autonomic nervous system. So it has a very important function with respect to maintaining homeostasis of your body and most of the organs in your body. So let's keep scrolling down. As you can see in there, the hypothalamus, as you can see right here, hormones, and autonomic effects, very important. In addition to that, obviously you have control of hunger, thermal regulation, okay? As you can see here, food intake, and a little bit of hormones, obviously, because you have, I mean, and a little bit of uh, relation with the sleep as well as memory. But again, the most important thing that you need to remember is autonomic control as well as hormones. The epithalamus consists of two main parts. One of them is the pineal gland, and the other one is the habenula. Habenula is part of the limbic system. We're gonna talk about it in a little bit, but the pineal gland is a gland that is going to secrete sero, uh, serotonin, and serotonin is gonna be necessary in order to control the circadian rhythm, which helps us distinguish between what is day and what is night. The next part is the cerebrum. We already talked about it, right? We can see it right here. We said that the cerebrum, right, is divided into hemispheres. This is one hemisphere. On the other side is going to be the other hemisphere, but it can also be divided in lobes. We said this is frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe. This is another lobe called the insula. You need to separate the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe in order to see the insula inside, okay? We also said that the brain cerebrum is not flat like a table, but it has elevations and grooves. The elevations are going to be called gyra, and the grooves are going to be called silcus. So if we keep scrolling down, we're going to see that in there that we have the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, we already talked about it. Cerebral white matter. The white matter represents the axons of the neurons. And right here, you can see these ones in green, that they go down and they go up. And this is the ones that we already covered in the spinal cord. We said these ones that go up are ascending tracks. The ones that go down are descending tracks. These tracks, regardless of these being ascending or descending, they're gonna be projection tracks. Why? Because those are the nerves. Those are the axons from the neuron. And those are gonna be the white matter. But projection tracks are not the only tracks that you have. You also have other tracks which are the tracks or the nerves or the axons that communicate one hemisphere to the other hemisphere, those are going to be called commissural tracks, and that's what you see right here in yellow. And not only that, you also have other tracks that are going to communicate different areas within the same hemisphere. So for example, this part with this part, and those are going to be called association tracks. So then the white matter are the nerves, and the nerves are going to form tracks. We have projection tracks, such as ascending and descending tracks. We have association tracks, which are the nerves that are going to communicate different areas within the same hemisphere. And we have, in this case, for example, right here, we're going to have commissural tracks that connect one hemisphere with another hemisphere. If you scroll down, you can see in the projection tracks, commissural tracts, association tracts. Okay, after that we have the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is where everything basically happens. All the coordination and integration of the different type of stimulus that we receive happens in the cerebral cortex at the very top. That's why you see this little square right here where they are showing you the cerebral cortex. So all this neural integration and coordination happens in three main areas. Those are gonna be the cerebral cortex, as you can see here, the basal nuclei, and the limbic system. Okay, if we enlarge this area, we're gonna see that there are very important cells right there in your cerebral cortex. Those cells are gonna be uh, pyramidal cells and stellate cells, okay? And they are this, this position that they have is in layers, but you don't need to know that. It's just, you just need to know that there are pyramidal cells and stellate cells, okay? At the level of your cortex. So if you keep scrolling down, you can see now that you have the limbic system. So the limbic system is a very important area for emotion and learning. There are multiple different areas associated with the uh, limbic system, and that's what you see right here. Depending on the book that you're gonna read, you're gonna see that different areas are gonna be part of it. But there are three main areas that everybody basically agrees on that, which are the singlet gyrus, the hippocampus, as well as the amygdala. The singlet gyrus is this one right here on top of the corpus callosum. Right here, you're gonna have 
the hippocampus and if I scroll down a little bit more you're going to see this one right here is the amygdala so everybody basically agrees that amygdala hippocampus and the cingulate gyrus which is this one in purple are going to be part of the uh, limbic system uh, right here you can see for example that the amygdala right here see is in charge of or in control of emotion and hippocampus is very important in memory the next topic is going to be the basal nuclei the basal nuclei are a set of set of neurons set of nuclei that they're going to be located on each side of that thalamus this is the thalamus okay and you see this one right here they are on the side those are considered basal nuclei so you need to have this transverse cut like this in order to see these areas right here these basal nuclei are uh, involved in motor coordination very important in motor coordination uh, and that's what we're going to see later on when we cover this in the motor part of the body okay so uh, right here you see motor control okay that's it